This is a box that we would use to carry spare tubes in. There are four in this box because it's actually a box of spares for the 2001. But the tubes used are identical in both cameras. Out you come. Here is a green tube. It's made by Philips and it's called a plumbicum tube. <coughs> and they would be installed here. In fact, you can see the bottom one poking out there. <coughs> the light enters the tube here, and there's a target material here. Now, a word about the target material. The big breakthrough, which was mentioned earlier, uh, which enabled the use of these very small tubes, was the discovery of a material, lead oxide, uh, to use as the target material. The tubes uh, analyze the pictures. Uh, the head amplifiers here amplify the pictures, feed them into here and through more electronics. And finally, onto the camera cable where they head off to the control van. There's an enormous amount of wires involved. The cable is called G101, uh, and that comes from the number of wires. So our three red, green, and blue signals are passed down the cable and all the control signals to adjust the electronics, the positioning of the scans uh, come back the other way on these 101 wires. Later cameras, uh, with the development of technology, used less and less wires, down to the point where modern cameras run on a piece of fibre. But at this time, G101 was a thing. Uh, it was very difficult to use, it's very heavy, uh, but the, the chaps used it, it was what was available. And at the time, this is the important thing to remember, is it was state of the art. When they were being made, it was obviously new technology and quite difficult to make the target material uh, deposited on the inside of the tube was, uh, had to be deposited very evenly. If there were any blemishes or marks in it, it would show up as a coloured splodge. So there was a selection process and the tubes came in various grades. Uh, the cheapest grade was an amateur grade, then you had a maintenance grade, an industrial grade and finally a broadcast grade. And as the tubes were made, they were tested and selected uh, for the minimum number of blemishes. And uh, it's rather, rather like a bit of a race. There are the winners, and they are the most valuable. So the broadcast tubes were quite hideously expensive. Something of the order, perhaps, of 500 to 1,000 pounds each in 1970 money. Now, the light enters along this line here, and here is a prism which is used to separate the light into the red, green, and blue. This prism is a similar one to the one in there, and if I can demonstrate the light entering it, the light enters here from the torch, and you can see that it's analysed into the green, the red, and the blue signals. <coughs>